Welcome everyone to week 11 of our sewing room organization challenge. I can't believe we're on week 11 already. It's crazy. So this month is May and we are talking about inspiration. Each week this month we will talk about things that inspire us and organize those things. So for example, last week we talked about books and this week we are going to talk about patterns. But before we get started, I'm Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance and I'm so happy you joined me today. So patterns, I don't know about you, but I have a lot of patterns. I have digital patterns and I have paper patterns and they're kind of all over the place. I have some in files, I have some in this wonderful basket. This basket, by the way, was made by a pattern from Patterns by Annie and uh, I'll put a link below to it. I use these for my patterns because it's like the perfect size. So I'm gonna tackle organizing them and I hope you'll join me. I'm also gonna talk to you a little bit about some tips when it comes to reading patterns. So let's get started. Okay, so here's the bulk of my patterns and I have quite a few. Um, I have some in this container and then I have some here, quite a few of these. Uh, so I'm gonna go through these and just talk a little bit about a few of them, stop and talk. Uh, for example, I bought this at a yard sale. I absolutely love this quilt. I would love to make it someday, but it's intense. Hmm, I don't know, but that's just some examples. Uh, I have a few free patterns in here. I have some that I've sketched and I have some that are just in pieces and not together. So as I find them, I'm going to match them up. Another thing I have a lot of are bag patterns. So I used to make a lot of bags and a friend of mine gave me a whole bunch of bag patterns. I probably will never make them. So those are ones that I will donate, get rid of, or um, even just send to a friend or something. So let's get started. All right, so I cleaned them out um, and this is everything I am donating or getting rid of. So let me just talk about a few. Uh, this little twister ruler, um, I took a class, actually you can't see, I think there's a glare. I took a class on this and it was a workshop. And to be honest, I absolutely hated the way the quilt came out. I don't think I'll ever make another one. It was kind of a bad experience for me because I put a lot of time and energy and it just, I didn't like it. So that brings back almost bad memories for me in a way, not in a really bad way, but in a way. Uh, and let's see, I'll pull another one. Here's one of those uh, great tote bag patterns that I got. I have a ton of them though, and there's no way I could possibly make or use all of these tote bags that uh, I have patterns for. There's a few patterns here that were downloaded that I absolutely uh, will shred. Um, just so you guys know, I am completely against photocopying any uh, pattern. It's intellectual property. It is not meant to be photocopied. Uh, and it's just something I really stand behind. If you ask any of my friends, they'll tell you that I'm really strict about this rule. So uh, anyway, anything that you see here that is on printer paper has been printed because I, uh, it was either free or because, well, it was downloaded in digital and I like to have a paper copy. Uh, so let's go through some of these and I'll talk about a few. This particular pattern I 
love. And I hope to make another one of these. I, um, I'll put a picture here of what I made with this. Highly recommend it. Great pattern, great directions, and it was so much fun to make. And since I do a lot of handwork, uh, this is something that goes with me when I go on trips. Uh, here's another great pattern that I love, love, love. Um, these little bags are fun to make too. Great for scrap busters. Let's see. Um, of course, who doesn't love the jelly roll rug? I've made a couple of them. And then I have some in here that I just want to make. Uh, I made this one, which I'll just put a picture here of that. And just some really cool things that I know I will make and uh, I'll make again. So there's just an overview of some of the, the patterns I have. I'm gonna continue to go through these this week, just like you, and get everything organized and wonderful. So I, I wanna give you a few tips on how I read a pattern and what I do to help me work through a pattern. So the first thing I wanna suggest is always, always read the entire pattern in the entire instructions and do that with anything, even books, magazines, whatever. It's just gonna help you understand and visualize what you need to do. And this works so well. There's so many times I just jump in and I don't read all the instructions and I get myself into trouble pretty quickly. This also allows you to see if there's any mistakes or something that doesn't make sense. You can kind of work it out before you actually start cutting fabric. So that's my first tip. Another tip is to make sure that you have all the pieces to whatever pattern you're making. So if you need to make templates, cut your templates, or print your templates or whatever you need to do. And then to organize them, what I do is I put stickers on all the template pieces that go together. And this is really helpful when there's a lot of different sizes and it just can get confusing. I use this technique with mask making a lot. It's because there were so many different sizes and I just couldn't keep them straight. So if you put the exact same sticker on all of them, you know that it's like, I don't know, granimals or whatever back in the 80s that you know it goes together because it has the same symbol on it. I also put notes and all that stuff on my pattern pieces as well. Next, uh, I do something kind of cool and I don't even know where I learned this. Actually, I probably got the technique from teaching because we do this a lot in teaching. So this particular pattern is called Jingle Bell Rock. It's by Robert Kaufman. It's a free pattern you can download. I just printed it in black and white for this purpose, but I'll put a link below to it. Uh, I put the pattern sheets into page protectors so I can make notes on them. So for example, here it says make 20. Say I get interrupted or something, I can put a note with a wet erase marker, not dry, a wet erase marker. Can you see that? Because it won't come off on fabric, okay? You need something wet to take it off. And then I'll just write on it. Um, so say it, it needs 20, I'll say made 15, uh, need five more. And I can just put that right on here, okay? And have a note to myself and then just take a wet rag or paper towel like I have and you can wipe it off and it saves your pattern. Now if I'm going to remake a pattern and I maybe say find something a mistake or something that I didn't like about it and I want to change it, I'll actually write on the pattern and put that pattern in the notes. Uh, but for something temporary, this works great. The last thing I want to mention about patterns is something I recently learned, well, not so recently, maybe five or six years ago, but I had been quilting a long time, maybe 15 years before I knew this. And on patterns, there are these little arrows, if you can see them, I'll put a picture, an inset picture. These little arrows tell you how to press the pieces. Now you may have known that all along. I did not, so I think it's worth mentioning. I hope these tips helped you. I hope looking through my stuff helped you as well. And it's come to the point that I get to give homework, yay. Uh, so your tasks are very similar to last week where you're gonna gather up all of your patterns and go through them and make piles and get rid of some that you just never, you're never gonna use. Uh, that also brings me to my fun task. I'm gonna do that a little ahead of time, mix things up a little bit. For your fun task, 
pick a couple of those patterns and mail them to a friend. It's so nice to get something like that. People love that you're thinking of them and that you thought of them with a particular pattern and put a little note inside and it'll just make somebody's day. So that's just a nice way to reach out to our fellow quilters, especially since guild meetings really aren't happening yet and quilt shows are just starting to happen. Just a nice way to make that connection. So the next task I have for you is to pull all the pieces of your pattern together. Now I didn't do that when I was sorting, but I did find that there were pieces all over the place. So I'm going to absolutely do that. The next task, and I'm gonna challenge you to do this, and I know photocopying and sharing patterns is very popular uh, in the quilting industry. And it's just something I stand against. Um, really would love to see you shred those patterns that were copies that somebody gave you and maybe go buy the hard copy. I'm in the process right now of writing patterns and I can tell you the work is hard and tedious. It's not easy and that is someone's intellectual property. So consider maybe getting rid of some of those pirated patterns that you have and supporting fellow quilters and the work that they do to bring us such incredible patterns. I know this is a tough subject and I know it's a sticky subject. I've gone back and forth with friends about it, but please do consider following the copyright laws. As always, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next week for week 12 of our challenge. Also, please consider subscribing, giving me that thumbs up and commenting below. I love hearing from you. I'll see you soon. Have a great week.